We spend most of our time working in decimal, which is base 10, but there are a bunch of other different number systems like hexadecimal, base 16, or binary, base 2. How do these all work? Let's start with decimal. Positional number systems like this have a number of digits, which we'll treat as boxes. You start with one on the right hand side, then label each box by multiplying the previous box by your base or radix, in this case 10. Each box can store a number of cat treats up to the radix minus one. Let's say we put one treat in the hundreds and one, two, three in the ones, then we can work out our number by adding together the treats in all the boxes multiplied by the label. So, well, we did have one, so that would be 100, zero, plus three, 103. Now we've just got three. Now let's look at binary. This is base two, so each subsequent box is multiplied by two. If we make the number of one, zero, one, zero, we can work out what this is in decimal. Eight plus zero plus two plus zero, 10. Binary is ubiquitous in computing, but it's often represented to humans in hexadecimal, base 16, where we use the characters A to F to represent those digits 10 to 16. So this because we tend to look at binary in groups of eight, and hexadecimal can handily represent these in just two characters. Does the radix even need to be a whole number? Not necessarily. One measure of the efficiency of numeric systems, radix economy, says that the best number for computing systems would actually be between two and three. It would actually be E. Let's try counting in base E. One, two, um, three, four, five, uh, no, I'm done. Does the radix even need to be a real number? Not necessarily. It could be something like one plus or minus i, which actually has a name. It's called Nega Twin Dragon Base. We have to save our friends. But to do that, we must infiltrate the Nega Twin Dragon Base. No. no. Grr, rah, rah.